Soon after the reverend finished, a five-star general got up to read a speech about Grace's life. Then a president from some foreign country that Jonah had never heard of began gesturing wildly and speaking in a language Jonah didn't recognize. With the clouds looming overhead and the light breeze rippling through the trees, ringing the graveyard, the funeral was turning into a real showstopper. Jonah had to hand it to Grace. She really knew how to go out with a bang. When the speakers had finished, six Nobel Peace Prize winners got out of their seats and walked toward Grace's casket in tight formation to lower it into the ground. Then men in matching black suits invited the guests to stand by a row and toss a shovel full of dirt on the coffin. Jonah was called first. He rose, strutted over to the grave, picked up the shovel, and tossed a clump of dirt onto her casket. Before he finished, he made sure to wave heartily to the funeral crowd. Seconds later, he was tackled by girls wearing We the We the Wiz is a is a izzard. Commen commemorative free trade t-shirts. Professor Astrid Rosenblum watched in shock as Jonah Wizard, the famed hip-hop star, almost drowned in a sea of teenage girl admiration. Nothing seemed to me be making any sense today. Not the weather, not the funeral service, and certainly not the guests. Astrid had been invited to Grace Cahill's funeral just yesterday by a man claiming to be Grace's lawyer, William McIntyre, and of course she had agreed to come. Grace Cahill's death had left Astrid with too many questions, though William's last-minute phone call was strange enough. Astrid was certainly not prepared for what she found at Grace's funeral. It wasn't just the number of people claiming to be relatives, hundreds if Astrid had to guess, but the great diversity among them startled her. As a Harvard professor, Astrid had come to learn a great deal about differences of opinion and background. She was an expert at handling eccentric scholars, overbearing parents, and high-maintenance benefactors. You name it, she dealt with it masterfully. But this? This was a circus. The wealth and self-assurance that permeated the crowd was astonishing. Earlier, an elderly Korean gentleman had strode past her carrying a diamond walking stick that he wasn't even using. Astrid adjusted her glasses for a better look around. At the end of her row, a blonde woman with a twitching eye appeared to be arguing with a squirrel in Russian. But before Astrid had a moment to take it in, the woman flicked her wrist at the animal, which stopped it dead in its tracks. Did she just poison a squirrel with her fingernails? Astrid shook her head in confusion. The only way, well, the only people besides her who didn't seem to fit in were the two children sitting a few rows in front of her. Even the woman with a monkey on her shoulder seemed more at home in this crowd. Based on Grace's description of her beloved f grandchildren, Astrid had guessed that these were, well, these two were Amy and Dan Cahill. The boy had dark blonde hair 
and kept swinging his legs back and forth under his chair. Just like Atticus, Astrid thought, thinking of her son, who had turned nine a few weeks ago. Amy sat primly in her seat, but looked shattered by Grace's passing. While everyone around them gossiped and chattered, Amy and Dan just sat quietly gazing at the earth where Grace now lay. It was as if those two children were the only people who knew what a funeral was for and who knew what it meant to miss someone. After the services finished, the mourners had lined up row by row to toss a shovel full of dirt onto Grace's grave. Astrid sat this part out. She hadn't known Grace for too long, and it seemed inappropriate to help peop help bury her. It took nearly an hour for each guest to throw in their shovel for, full of earth. The sky was almost completely overcast now, and the wind had picked up, but no one had left yet. All the relatives were sticking around for something. There was a feeling of nervousness, of anxiety in the air. Groups of families gathered together and almost, almost sneered at others. For all the knowing looks that were being exchanged, Astrid thought she might as well have been in a Roman court during a plot to overthrow the to over the throw the Caesar. She felt her own body tense with anxiety. William McIntyre walked up to the podium next. Thank you all for coming, he said gravely. I am William McIntyre, Madame Cahill's lawyer and executor. A light murmur began to spread, ac spread across the graveyard. If you will look inside your programs, McIntyre continued, some of you will find a gold invitation card. The murmuring deepened as hundreds of people shuffled through their programs. Some ripped theirs open, and Astrid could see plumes of paper rising above the crowd. Sacre bleu. This is impossible. A man with a curly mustache exclaimed. There must be some mistake, another woman whined from the back of the crowd. Curses were yelled all over the graveyard as guests discovered they had not received an invitation. The woman sitting next to Astrid tried to steal a card from a child when her parents weren't looking. Thief! The little girl yelled, and a fight broke out. Even those who did receive invitations were greedily lording them over less fortunate relatives. Astrid didn't look inside her program, but someone jostled her from her well, from behind and a gold card fell from Astrid's program down to the grass beneath her feet, well, her chair. She picked it up and turned it over. Astrid's mouth dropped open. It was impossible. There must have been mista some mistake. She she checked her name at the top of the card twice more. The invita invitation was clearly addressed to her. But why? The crowd had now fully fallen into a roar of complaints and angry shouting. Apparently, a great majority of the guests had not received a golden invi golden invitation card and the painful truth of being left out was hitting them hard. Amidst the hubbub, Astrid stole a glance at Amy and Dan in front of her. For the first time all afternoon, they were smiling. I assure you, 
William raised his voice above the yelling. The invitations were not done randomly. I apologize to those of you who were excluded. Grace Cahill meant you no disrespect. Of all the members of the Cahill clan, only a few were chosen as the most likely. Most likely to what? Dan piped up. To be the beneficiaries of Grace Cahill's will. Now, if you please, those with invitations will gather in the Great Hall. Beneficiaries? McIntyre had said nothing about a will reading. This was not part of the plan.